So Cheeky and I are staying at my parents' house for the night. It's been a while since I visited them and they live like, I don't know, an hour away. So I figured that I would just stay here. I think I like coming here not only to spend some time with my parents, but also it makes me feel like I'm a kid again and not having any responsibilities or not like any adult responsibilities and just like getting fed all the time. It went very minimal. I just brought my skincare, my pajamas, and a pair of leggings. I also brought like some nail stuff because I want to do my nails and I think my mom would probably like a manicure as well perhaps. Good morning, Papa. <laughs> This is Oma's famous breakfast. We've got some cereal slash granola and apple slices. Mm. Well, I am ready to go on my morning walk with my Oma. We're just gonna pop on over to the mountain. However, I wanted to put some deodorant before I left. This is where I wanna thank our sponsor, Thank you, Native, for sponsoring today's video. Now, I brought three scents with me that I have been rotating. So first up, we've got coconut vanilla. It smells like you're on a beach with a pina colada. It's really warm, sweet, and I just love the smell of vanilla. Next up, we've got rosemary and lemon zest. Now, this one's perfect if you love herbal scents. It's definitely bright because the lemon, and it just smells really clean. And lastly, we've got eucalyptus and mint. This one, when I smell this, I just imagine myself waiting to get my massage. It's very peaceful, zen, also very clean. I love how the texture doesn't feel sticky at all. It dries really quickly, which is perfect for really impatient people like me. These are made with clean and simple ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. They're also vegan, aluminum-free, cruelty-free, paraben, and sulfate-free. They've got such a wide range of choices for scents. Native also recently teamed up with Jungle O, and they launched a limited edition collection of deodorants and body washes. Native also has body washes and toothpaste, so you can treat your entire body with clean and safe products. Now usually three deodorants are $36. However, if you use my link and code, which is Gen M, you can get them for $24. That's 33% off, which is amazing. You can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste using my code as well. Shipping is free in the US, and I'll also leave the link and all the information to these deodorants in the description box, so please pop that open. me a little Tupperware of her famous kimchi jjigae. Honestly, nothing beats almost kimchi jjigae. I am so excited to eat this, although I did have this yesterday as well. <laughs> hmm. As you guys can see, I am back at my house. I had a lovely day slash night at my parents. I feel like this was the best 
visit yet because I really wanted to challenge my patience, especially with my parents. Like I just reread A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle and there's a whole chapter about patience. He brought up this quote by Ram Dass and he said, if you think you're enlightened, try spending a week with your parents. And I'm like, oh, that's so true because I love my parents, but they just know exactly what button to press. The main thing that my dad does that like really just grinds my gears is when I come over, he has so many ideas. He has so many tasks that he thinks that I need to do and they all seem so urgent. Like the last time I came over, he was telling me like, Jen, you need to buy land. You need to buy land right now because you're gonna sell it to Tesla. Tesla needs land because they're gonna need more charging stations. It's just like- I'm like, I'm not gonna freaking buy a random plot of land hoping that Tesla is gonna buy it. But I mean, these are just like two of hundreds of ideas that he bombards on me. I guess you can say that I don't really like being told what to do, especially when it's just everything. For my mom, she is just like a constant worrier. And any type of news I have, there's always, she's always like the doom and gloom girl. Like if something good happens, she would always be like, oh well. What if this happens or what if there's an earthquake? Bless her, but there's just a lot of fear in her. And sometimes if it's like good news that I'm trying to share and, and she's just giving me bad vibes, I used to snap at her being like, can you just be happy for me? Like everything's gonna be fine. I have it under control. Okay, so where I'm going with this is your parents know exactly what to do to press your buttons. And what I'm learning is that I don't need to bite the bait each time. The biggest thing I'm trying to practice is to not react to it. Understanding that like, okay, the reason why I'm feeling triggered is because this is like three decades of them trying to tell me what to do or them dumping their worries on me and me being fed up with it and not really knowing what to do with that energy. A new earth is reminding me that I just need to let them feel seen and heard and just let it go. When he's telling me these like hundreds of ideas, I should just be like, that's a good idea, Appa, I'll look into that. And that would just be that. And for my mom, just letting her talk and then reassuring her that it's gonna be okay. I feel like all the stuff that I'm reading is becoming like the building blocks of me becoming a more peaceful me. Like before, I was just kind of looking for a fight. Like I think I secretly like the drama of just like, you know, me and my parents would just scream at each other and then that would just be our dynamic and then we would be cool. But it doesn't have to be like that, you know? I think the reason why I'm bringing this up is that I think we all have different dynamics with our parents and our family. And I do believe that it can be amended and, and evolved. If you told the 18 year old me that I would be as close with my family as I am today, I would not have believed you. We really, really butted heads. It took us a lot to get to where we are today. Patience on my part, patience from their part. Like it's so amazing to see how far my parents have come to emotionally. When I really boil down my parents' intentions, it's literally just to help me out. They, this is their way of showing me that they care for me. And uh, that's something that I always wanna keep in mind. This is my yoga instructor. Namaste. Ben. Bit of yogatation, if you will, or medi yoga. Bit of meditation, bit of yoga. Let's check it out. <laughs> Do it more like, um, can I just. I don't want to shake my tits in front of the camera. <laughs> I don't want to shake my tits in front of the camera. So let's try to do it in a way where. <laughs> something that I've been wanting to do for such a long time. I just need to get rid of stuff. I want to do a huge closet clear out 
and I thought I would start off with shoes because they seem the most approachable. Also, it's like pretty obvious if like I want to keep a pair of shoes or not. Now that I look at them, I kind of think they're fire. This is annoying. Now that I'm looking at them on the screen, I actually think they're really cute. They kind of look like neon Barbie shoes, but I, I haven't even worn them. I have so many memories in these boots. Ugh, these were my go-to little black boots. This is annoying. This is why I didn't want to try on my stuff because it just makes me second guess. Let's part ways. Goodbye. Yo, these are such a throwback. I've had these Gerties forever. I think these are 10 years old now. Jeez, but I don't know. I'm not too hot on the style, man. But I kind of want to just keep them for nostalgic purposes. So these were a quarantine purchase. I bought this maybe in March or April of last year, but I thought that these would be really cute festival boots because very Western. I loved how the boots went all the way up. I was feeling these boots so much that I also got an exact pair in white. I don't know, which is hilarious because I haven't worn these boots out at all. So I need to part ways with one because two of the same type of statement boot it's just ridiculous. The white ones are definitely more fitted. I can't even see what I look like in the viewfinder. Is it a look? I don't know. You guys, I can't get rid of this. I actually have never worn this. Now that I put it on, it's like kind of a vibe. So this is by the street style brand Pleasures. And I'm not sure if they did a collaboration with Joy Division or they just like used the cover art. But I love this because y'all know I'm a huge fan of Joy Division and Unknown Pleasures. And this is their album cover. And they just kind of blew it up and made it into like a nice bowling shirt. Again, I'm looking at the viewfinder and I love the way the sweater looks. The cute little roll neck, the color scheme. It's like a, like a spring sunset. But the issue with this sweater is that it's so uncomfortable. It's like just these tiny microfiber stabbing. Like it's not painful, but it's just like, you know you're wearing a sweater. You know what I mean? It's just like kind of itchy, but it's so freaking cute. Okay, I'm gonna keep it for one more season because this would be perfect for the spring. And I think it really works with this haircut. I feel so uncomfortable. This is definitely a huge statement. I like the powerful sleeves. It's just like a very unique top. Like I definitely don't have anything like this, but it's just so uncomfortable. Like it's very scratchy at the arms. I don't know. I feel like if I was going to an event or if I was like going out drinking or something, then eventually I wouldn't mind because when you're out and about, you just have to like deal with whatever is going on with your clothes, whether it's like stabbing heels, itchy fabric. When you're out and about, you just deal with it. But now that I'm not really going out, this is just, this is just not worth it y'all. No, here I go again. I'm like fantasizing, wearing this with like, you know, some blue jeans. Snap out of it, snap out of it. You're never gonna wear it, Jen. You're never fucking gonna wear it. So I got this like kind of tie-dye x-ray-esque long sleeve from the flea market. But yeah, I got this thinking that I would have a ton of ways to wear it, but I actually have not gotten any wear out of it. I think it's also because this fabric's not very soft. It's, it's like the starchy, heavy fabric. It's cute though. I'm looking at the freaking, look at the viewfinder. It looks kind of cute in the viewfinder though. So I know that this black t-shirt looks pretty inconspicuous from the front, but in the back, we've got all the Greek gods and goddesses. I wish that the back graphic was on the front. You know what I mean? Cause then you can just see everything. And then once I read Circe over the summer, then I was like extremely proud about this t-shirt. I was like, look, look at these Greek gods. Look at these mythological figures. But now that my Circe heat has gone down a little bit, I'm a little bit less enthusiastic about this t-shirt. Cause at the end of the day, this is what it looks like on the daily. It's so hard to part ways. It stays, this t-shirt stays. It is very comfortable. This is a Juicy Couture tracksuit. I literally look like Amy Poehler from Mean Girls as like the cool mom giving the children vodka shots. Yeah, I mean, it's cute, but it's just not for me, man. It's not happening. I always save this dress just in case I might wear it for like a New Year's Eve. But honestly, it's been two years since I've had this dress and I actually did wear it in was it January 2019? I wore it on the eve of December 2018. So I did already have 
like my New Year's Eve fantasy with this. So I think it's time to part ways. <laughs> this one's hard to let go though. Another day, another pile of laundry. But to be fair, I find this process extremely relaxing because I know where everything's gonna go. I like the art of folding garments. I don't know, it's just, it's just very relaxing to me. And now when I put the clothes away, there's ample space. There's a lot of room, which is nice. We got rid of a ton of stuff. And so the, the closets just feel lighter. I feel really bad because when I did my Instagram story where I said I was gonna do my closet clean out, there were so many of you that begged me to get a Depop or a Poshmark and sell my clothing that way. But you guys, it's just too much work. I'm gonna be honest, I can be lazy and I just don't have the patience or the time. Just like the desire to take pictures of each one of these items and then individually ship them out. Like, dude, that's a full-time job, y'all. And then that would also require me just holding on to everything, hoping that it would sell. So it's just, it's just too much. So I've gone on the road that's traveled, that's stampeded down, and I just went to Crossroads. I'm so sorry, y'all. There has to be an easier way. I think the biggest thing for me is like, I just wanna be freaking comfortable in what I wear. I don't wanna like squeeze into things and feel restricted. I got rid of all the stuff that is slightly too small for me because I, I would hold on to some articles of clothing hoping that like, okay, when I get really fit and I'm at like my goal weight again, th these will fit. Like, I just don't even want to have clothes like that anymore. For some reason, it puts like a lot of psychological pressure on me. And when I'm feeling good and then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try on those jeans, those, those non-stretch Levi's jeans only to see that they don't fit me. Like I find that quite discouraging. So I just got rid of anything that doesn't fit me right now. I just don't want to feel constrained by my clothing. Am I making myself clear? I just don't want to be constrained. That's the update on the closet clean out. And now we're approaching the end of this vlog. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm going to continue folding the rest of these beautiful, clean smelling clothes. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.